if I don't like die. We always die. <laughs> we even have fun if I die. No, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, New York City and New York City bookstores and New York City comics. Oh my gosh, I am so happy to be back home in New York. Um, you know, I've lived in California for a lot of years now, a lot, a lot of years, but I grew up, you know, not so far from here, 103rd Street and Amsterdam Avenue down the way. And, uh, <sighs> California is cool though. I really like California. You must know by now that we have legalized marijuana for recreational use. Oh yeah, but even before that, when it was quote unquote only for medical purposes, I think the laws were a little bit lax out there. Uh, I read about this one guy who tried without success to not get a medical marijuana license. He went into the doctor and said, I've got the Mondays. He walks out with a script. <laughs> he tries again and he says, uh, well, doctor, whenever I smoke marijuana, I get extremely paranoid. The doctor says, try Indica and gives him a script. But uh, they're really serious about their mental health out there as we all should be. I mean, we've got our psychiatrists, our psychologists, our counselors, our marriage and family therapists or MFTs. We got our MFCCs and I have had all of them working for me <laughs> all at the same time. Um, a couple of years ago, in fact, it was around the spring. I was really in a really, really bad place. I went to my regular appointment with my MFT and she immediately walked me over to IOP. Not, not IHOP. IOP, Intensive Outpatient Program. And I got to say, though, after about two and a half months of five-hour days, four days a week, I was feeling really pretty good. The very first weekend after the program was over, I decided I was going to test out my newfound stability. So um, I was invited to this thing out by the beach, about a 60 mile drive from my house. And when I told some of my family and my friends about this event, they were like, well, you know, Ashton, are you ready for this kind of thing? You know, don't get sucked into anything. <laughs> Reminding me that you just got out of three months of therapy. You know, but I tried to tell them I'm fine. And my biggest problem has been isolating. So I'm trying to stay out of the house stay on a nice schedule like the doctor prescribed. But by the time I get out to this event, I was starting to get nervous. Anxiety set in, I find like I'm playing with the fringe on my scarf. There were a lot more people there than I expected. And uh, suddenly the chips and dip over in the corner was looking really good to me. But don't eat your feelings, don't eat your feelings. That's something we learned in group therapy. And then I see her. She's got these sparkling eyes that are fixed right on me, hand extended, so I know oh, she's here for me. Uh, and she's like, Ashton, I'm Crystal. That's a beautiful pashmina you're wearing. <laughs> pashmina? Nobody ever calls my scarf a pashmina. Let me tell you about this Crystal. She reminds me of this song by Cake. And how do I know about this song? I will tell you. But it goes, I want a girl with a short skirt and a long jacket. So she's wearing this dark suit. And it's not revealing anything, but it's really, really fitting nice. And she's got the tousled waves. And I'm really liking that. But most of all, it's those eyes. And she just keeps them trained on me. Her hands seem to mimic my movements. She leads me into this great ballroom, and just like a proper first date, there's a movie. And it's a real date night kind of movie. It's got exotic scenery and beautiful location and even a few ambiguously ethnic people sprinkled throughout the film. And after the movie, she gets us a nice table. So Ashton, what are your passions? <laughs> My passions? I start feeling lightheaded. Uh, do you love travel? I confess to her that my out-of-state travel has really been pretty minimal. 
but it is something that I really long to do. So of course she pulls out the iPhone and she starts wowing me with all the pictures. And for every ooh and ah that I utter, she gives me this great smile and she's nodding in excitement. It's like a seduction, this dance. I notice that she uh, moves forward in her chair the same time I do. She puts a little loose hair behind the ear. <laughs> and so I respond with a casual flick of the bangs. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but I can't help myself. I'm starting to get caught up in this thing. And after a while, I find myself trying to impress her. So I reveal that I'm thinking of phasing out of my nine to five job. I tell her the secret that I've recently been left a little inheritance. And then I kind of lean in and ask, so what if I just pay cash? That seals it. Crystal ushers me into this small room to like consummate this thing. But now I'm disappointed because it's not like the grand ballroom we just left. I mean, now it's just four walls, hard chair, glaring lights, I swear I can see every vein and wrinkle on my hand, but it's okay, because Crystal and I are committed. So I start signing pages and pages of documents that will make us, well, make me the happy owner of a new vacation timeshare. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. This one bedroom, one bath unit that I let myself get sucked into. So somewhere on page three of all these documents, it says that the actual property itself, the condo, is located in a place called Shallow Water, Texas. Now this is not exactly the oceanfront property that I was envisioning while watching the movie. But again, you know, it doesn't matter. All I hear is Crystal's voice in my ear. Exchange your points for exotic travel. And I'm all in. So after this date, Crystal walks me back to my car and she hands me her business card with her private number on the back. And I'm happily driving all the way home, thrilled about this great deal that I made. In fact, when I get home, I can't wait to tear into this huge book that they've given me with the beautiful pictures of all these gorgeous travel destinations. And people, I swear, I can still <laughs> smell Crystal's perfume on my pashmina from when she hugged me goodbye in the parking lot. But a couple hours later, I'm still home and I'm alone. And now is when I start to panic. I mean, what did I just do? <laughs> We're talking 10 I must have been crazy. So here's why I start Googling the company. Better Business Bureau, Yelp, whatever I can find. I even find Miss Crystal referred to by name. And none of this is pretty. I mean, the general consensus is scam alert. Mm -hmm. The terrible thing is, though, that I really can't even claim scam. I mean, I'm in a sales job myself. And I swear, I knew every trick that was being perpetrated in that grand ballroom in Newport Beach. But it was like I couldn't help myself. I needed Crystal to see me as spontaneous and exciting and resolute. And if I back out of this thing now, she'll know I'm nothing but a fraud and a poser. But not only that, it's like more important to me was she needed my sale. I mean, it was like the end of the month. What if this was tied to her bonus? So I start pulling up my budget to see what can I cut so that I can afford this timeshare and not renege on poor Crystal. Okay, so there's uh, $29.99 a month for the gym membership. Have I gone in a year? <laughs> no, so let's throw that out. There's my car lease. And I swear I love my car, but the lease is almost up, so I figure I could trade it in for a cheaper model. Oh yeah, and then there's the $30 a month for the prepaid legal services. <laughs> I only signed up for that scam to help out another friend, and we're no longer friends. 
But I realized I'm going to have to lie to people. I'm going to have to hide this from my family and my friends and everybody who told you I told you so. And then it hits me. Aston, you thirsty slut. In less than 12 hours, I have relived every destructive codependent relationship that I've had in my entire life. Mm. You know, I have to say it was like residual stress from two unhealthy relationships that helped drive me into therapy to begin with. And I remembered something that we did learn in group. Codependency, although it's got many signs and layers of behavior, for me, there were three main things. One, I crave recognition and praise in order to not feel less than. I should have run out of there as soon as she said Pashmina. <laughs> Two, I need to feel needed in order to be happy in a relationship. And Crystal wouldn't be able to get her bonus without me. <laughs> and three, I always kick my own needs to the curb in order to fulfill what I think the other person wants. And I just bought this Time share that I can't afford. I'm not doing this again, I swear. Ashton, you're not doing this again. So I call up Crystal, it's the middle of the night, I leave a message. Not saying anything, just vague, thanks a lot, and have a few questions. The next morning, too early in the morning, she calls back. And people, I swear, I almost cave when I hear that <laughs> little sweet, seductive voice. But I know what I have to do. Crystal, I can't continue with this. I've got to end this now. But Ashton, why? Talk to me. And for the first time, I do the thing <laughs> that's been so hard for me to do in the past. I forget about what I think the other person wants, and I focus on what I need. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it was basically, <laughs> Crystal, I just completed two and a half months of intensive therapy, and I just don't need an entanglement like this. And I was shocked, but I was free. I had done it. <laughs> and this time, it didn't take me 13 years to get out of it. <laughs> like my last codependent marriage. And you better believe I got back every penny of my $990 deposit. Nice. That's right. <laughs> Good job.